Yo, what's up guys? New video on Dragon's Abyss Heart. And didn't really expect another one on this one, but I think I've been saying it for quite a bunch of times already. Every time that someone just comes up with something new, and I'm like, wow, that's actually pretty cool. That's pretty impressive. Is this new? No. Uh, we all know the Liam. The Liam is supposed to kill the boss, and a lot. I've been calling this team overrated for the main reason that Liam, it's not wrong right now, don't, don't mind it, but... A lot of people expect Liam to do the maximum amount of damage because we all do know what Liam does. Liam is able to do a shit ton of damage the moment that the enemy is under 50% HP and if there's only three targets, he will do a lot of ignore defense. However, a lot of people do expect him to do that skill when the enemy is below 50% HP and that can one-shot the dragon from 50% HP to zero. Definitely can. However, Liam is not going to do this 100% of the time at 50% of HP. He's actually going to do that probably like 60 to 70% of the time. You actually need to bring down the boss to 30 or 35% HP and then Liam will always do a three. That does also mean that you're overkilling this boss by a long shot because this skill definitely does like half HP of the boss easily, even on triple fight set. So for that reason, Liam is very nice, but he's also somewhat overrated. You do need very good room quality for this team to be able to run it. It's not that like, oh, I can just like close to one shot it or I can do a Shina into a Julie one shot, which I've seen a lot of people do. Like, I'm not even sure how that runs, but I think that would just run straight up terrible. But I would highly recommend only running this if you're Julie plus Shina can just one shot the ways where Julie moves first and then Shina because that is the perfect eye state. It's not an armor break setup that you need for Julie or anything like that. However, we're talking about replacements. What could possibly be a replacement for a Liam ball? You probably saw it in the thumbnail. And that might be Geralt. And then at first, like when uh, this got to my attention, someone mentioned it to me, uh, Geralt. And I'm like, no way that Geralt is going to do Liam damage. We, we've all been seeing the Geralt damage. We've all seen being disappointed by his skill 3 not doing that much damage. Sure, it's enemy max HP scaling. Sure, he has the cooldown decrease, but all of that shit doesn't really matter. But what is an interesting fact about him is the part that's right up here. He adds extra damage for water. And he has therefore a 17 better lead than a Liam. And that part actually makes him interesting. Because of that, you actually make your Julie a lot stronger and you make your Kyle a lot stronger. Once again, I have mentioned this in the past as well. If you do happen to have Delsim, do use Delsim over Kyle because the animations are so much faster and therefore I also kind of hate this team because I don't have a Delsim. I fed all of my Delsims or something, I don't know. But Delsim is just a lot slower. I haven't seen this run yet, so let's actually see how this runs. So we definitely do go for kills. Do you need good rune quality on this? Yes, most definitely you do need good rune quality on this, especially if you want to have this thing like... Uh, kill that in one hit that would save a lot of animation time but let's see if this is actually doable for me so we boost up we go again yeah that's definitely perfect the ice state for you to do your skill and that is enough damage so yes it's definitely possible if you have good enough room quality to make this work um what average are you going to be looking at i would say this probably has that 27 average that we see on the top right right now if your Kyle does go for a single kill on this wave, it would be a bit better. Or actually quite a bit better, but you do need quite a bit better runes than me. I would say that my Kyle's actually on kind of... The runes are good, but the artifacts are really shit. Because he's working with like a 14 damage on fire, which is really bad. It has like good other stats next to it, and therefore it's kind of okay-ish and my best slot. But... I would definitely say that he's, uh, if you would happen to have like a 19 damage on fire, it would be a lot better. And I would say, yeah, it's probably 26 to 27 average. I would say if you have a Del Seam, you probably bring it down to, I would say 25 and a half average. And then if you also kill this in one go, I think you bring it down to probably 24-ish average, 24, maybe even 23 average. So definitely if you don't happen to have a liam it is still possible because a lot of people are saying like oh i easily have the runes i just don't have the liam so i can't build this well with this team you can totally build this and okay i do need a little bit more damage on that but that little bit more damage julie still moves because julie is fast enough i will show the runes and the speed tuning in a second I would definitely say that my artifacts damage on fire are the hard part that is lacking here, which is actually going to give me on the edge of like, do I do enough damage or do I not do enough damage? 
There's also a big factor to um, Kyle or Delsin. Does he go for S1, S1, or does he go for S2, S1, or S1, S2, depending on you have crit damage max, crit damage low. Um, of course, an S2 in there is going to be the stronger hit. An S1 in there is going to be the weaker hit. So kind of depends what he does, when he does it. So in this case, he does double S2, and then uh, we didn't have enough damage by a slight bit once again. Uh, I did read about the guy. I will also link his... Um, reddit post in the description down below that he was saying maybe try to get your gerald on 65 accuracy and therefore your gerald can push back the boss is an option because gerald skill 3 does have a pushback mechanic in there but it's not really something i would recommend to go for so it's not really something that i would say like yeah that's probably the way to go if i want to improve this team right now i think my easiest bet are maybe adding an extra fight set on the julie because um, I saw his team and his Julie also had a fight set. You do need pretty good fight sets for this and pretty good runes throughout to actually make this work. But I would say that the biggest thing that I'm lacking is good um, damage on fire artifacts for the two water units. That is, I would say, by far the biggest thing that I'm lacking and I'm lacking not having Dalsim, I have a Kyle. So for me personally, if you do have a Liam and you already have the team running, I would definitely use the Liam. I think it's still more chill. I think it's still better because with the Liam, you have the option to go Luna. And my Luna does actually have a damage on fire that is a lot higher because if we check the Luna, I'm not sure if she still has her correct artifact. In this case, not really. But if we check this damage on fire, uh, the other Luna had it. This is the damage on fire that I use for Luna, which is 19 and then like two other lines that are useful. However, for Kyle, I don't really have those. Like, it's just never dropped, like, apparently. So damage on fire, the highest I have is a 16. And I have one that's this. Like, maybe, yeah, this is an 8 up. So I felt like that maybe did a little bit more than the other one. Maybe a straight up 16 is actually better, but it's only having one extra line next to it. Might be that this is a little bit better, and then I would have to give this one to the other one. But, yeah, as you can see, I don't really have crazy good artifacts for that. And if you happen to have that 19 on a water and you put it on a Del Seam, then that might actually be better for you to make it work that way. So what is the speed tuning? How does this work? Um, I've showcased this team a bunch of times, but you need a Julie at a 123 or a 223 speed. That is the minimum. I've seen a lot of people still try to force in Rage, but actually do check out on your optimizer where you first lock all of the runes, then you optimize for your artifacts. You get the best artifacts in there. In this case, for my, this is a 15 and then a 12. It's a below one, but it is the best in slot for me. You definitely want to focus all the way to uh, additional damage by attack. And then all of the other lines are kind of like added. It's mainly just additional damage by attack. If I had a 40, I think if I had a 13 in here, it would have already been better than this or almost. I think a 14 would have been better than these two lines like all together. So that's definitely something to keep in mind. But first locking the artifacts, then lock artifacts saying like, okay, use these artifacts and then optimize it based on the damage dealing uh, just crits on any, or like you can check up like how much defense they have, but it doesn't really matter. Well, that actually kind of matters a bit. But then also check for your best uh, fatal set and your best swift set, because it's very likely at this speed, if you want to go attack, crit damage, attack, that you don't have a best rage set, but you happen to have a best fatal set or a best swift set, because that is what we in general farm more than farming rage. So if you want to fix your Julie, definitely check out those things. My shine in this case is triple fight. I definitely do need triple fight. Um, in this case, I have enough accuracy. You need 65 accuracy. You get 25 accuracy from this. You could say I put accuracy as three and then I do uh, no additional damage from these. A thing to keep in mind is that this is a multi-hit, whereas the first hit can armor break or cannot armor break. You want to be killing the waves where your Shina doesn't have a armor break in the first setup. It just makes the run a lot more successful that way. Sure, you can still do it with the Delsim cleans up afterwards. Like, it is possible. It is definitely possible, but it's really recommended. I don't know. Like, if you want to go this with a lot less damage where your Delsim always has to clean up the waves... Yeah, then I would say you Gerald 65 accuracy and make him push back, but still you could miss that pushback because of 15 check. So not really sure if that's the way to go. I also went a speed, crit rate, and attack on this Shina because you don't need as much damage for it. You're kind of focusing still on a lot of attack because it's additional damage by attack rather than aiming a lot for the crit damage. That's the same thing for Julie. You don't need a shit ton of crit damage. Sure, crit damage helps, but you're aiming for a shit ton of attack. That's the main thing. 
Then the Kyle, as mentioned, it has pretty bad artifacts left side. If you have a better artifact right uh, left side, it will help out a lot. Right side artifact, I aimed for a crit damage max. I'm not sure if crit damage max is the best in slot, but I would say uh, go for combination lines of crit damage own, crit damage max, and then crit damage skill too. I think that's the, the higher hitting thing. It might be that your run is somewhat more inconsistent that way, because if he doesn't do a crit damage two, and you have a lot of crit damage two stacked on him, he's just gonna lack a lot of damage. So therefore I'd rather go for crit damage own, crit damage max. Because he's hitting at first, he's dropping the HP to like half or below half. A little bit of crit damage less in there is definitely not bad. First skill crit damage on him is probably not that interesting. I'm not sure how that entirely works with his animations for... Because his S2 is a double hit, his S1 is a single hit. But does a crit damage max or a crit damage first fully work on him because he gets like an additional turn to hit again? Or does that count as like a S2 is one and two hit? And then the additional turn is a third hit. Or does it count as a one again? So if that counts as a one again, then uh, that's actually something I will test in a second. So after like explaining all of the builds, I, I will see if I can see the difference in switching this one to a good crit damage first. And I have good enough crit damage first to see the difference in that. And then of course you want to add as much damage to him as possible. Oh, wait for uh, speeds that I missed. This speed has to be at least 86. Uh, this speed has to be, as mentioned, 120. This one is overstacking the Shina. This one has to be at least 62. Let me quickly double check. Yep, plus 62. And then just shit ton of damage. Wouldn't really focus on like getting accuracy in or anything like that. You need 65 accuracy to make it good enough. So might as well get zero on it. This thing is just triple fight and in speed tune doesn't really do too much. And then this thing is also triple fight. You need to have it on triple fight. It needs to be at least plus 54 and i would focus mainly on that crit damage so that is that so let's actually see if we can see the difference between the dell seams uh, how the crit damage uh, first would actually stack on that unit so let's go through a run okay let's just check it at the boss i think that's the easiest way because that's where i have like a lot of crit damage max so i would just have to check like how much damage it does if you have a lot better of a Kyle slash Del Seam, I have seen people uh, one-shot mid-boss. So that definitely is a possibility in there. So let's go for a skill 2 right now. 28, 28. He gets the additional turn, and then on the additional turn we do a 39. Okay, let's keep those numbers in mind. 28, 28, 39. Okay, let's use this artifact that has mainly crit damage uh, first, but it also has everything else, so it's definitely a good artifact if the crit damage first on that third hit does actually count as first hit. So let's also see if we start killing this one a bit more than we were in the past. Uh, it does look like a bit more damage. It does definitely look like a bit more damage, but let's see how that works out at this stage. So we set double 28s into a 39, I think. I don't exactly remember already. So we see a 29 and then a 28. Well, that's that crit damage first. And then we have a 39. So I think the 39 is still about the same. So it might be that it kind of works, but um, I think it kind of does work. So crit damage first is not too bad on him, but I would still aim for combination lines. I think it works. It's not like 100% like great test or anything like that. But that's also the thing with artifacts. It's very hard to say like, oh, which artifact is going to do more damage than another artifact. It also took me quite a while to find, for example, my Teshar artifact. That's the best on the right slot, which in the end ended up being some combination lines like this. This ended up being my best artifact in slot for my uh, Teshar, for example. Would it maybe be a best in slot for this one as well? It could be because of that crit damage skill too. Let's give that a try, actually. So yeah, that's the thing with artifacts, fine tuning, especially right side artifact on like crit damage lines. It's a lot of just trial and error. That's that's what I can tell you the most about it. Just trial and error, just try one and then see if it feels better. Sure, if he goes double S1, you're definitely not going to kill. You definitely do need that S2 in there. But yeah, am I going to get close towards killing the mid boss, for example? Uh, no, that's... No, it's pretty much the same damage as I see over here. Yeah, pretty much the same damage. Also, uh, because the Kyle didn't go double S2 right now, I did do too little damage where the um, unit on the left way, what's it called? The, the 
The stupid ass unit on the left didn't even do his proper skill. So yeah, you definitely do have that AI issue in there as well. If they don't do the right skill. So if Kyle would full on derp and only do as one the whole time, which is a possibility out there, you might still look at a failed run. Uh, would you say like, oh, Liam would have solved that problem? No, if, if uh, the, what's it called? If the Gerald derps, Liam would also derp. So that's just something to keep in mind. Like these units are still bound to derping. I do like the setup with a Luna a lot better and with a uh, Liam a lot better. But if you have the good runes and you have the good artifacts, I think this, like I can literally add up, like if this was a 19, this would straight up add up like 5% damage on that whole Kyle, which is just an insane amount of damage increase. Like 5% damage increase is just every hit, like just one to two, 3K extra, which is a really big difference. But Kyle going for S1s rather than an S2 is just a really big difference in damage as well. And if Kyle would say like, okay, I start off with a S2, which is actually the worst start, I think, because that's why he doesn't have like the extra damage up or does he already? I'm not 100% sure. No, I don't think, I think he already has that because he hasn't been hit. So for that reason, yeah, it's a good team. You need good runes for it. That's the main thing that there is to it. But I did hear a lot of people say like, oh, I have the good runes, but I just don't have a Liam, so I can't build it. I would say that the Liam team is slightly easier to build, especially because you have the option to go for a Luna as well, if you have better artifacts on those, which is the case for my case. However, is this as hard to rune as the Liam team? I would say um, this team is pretty much as hard to rune. It's harder to get to the threshold where it actually works all the... Or no, I would say it's the same difficulty to get to the threshold where it works like as high as it possibly can, which is just the... Uh, defense activation rate of you which might mess it up but anything else is always going fine i think at that point is as difficult to ruin as one another however i think the liam team if you care less about fails and you're okay with like having a bunch of fails in there then the liam team is easy to ruin because the liam like if he goes for his skill in the end he will drop down the boss from 50 percent or even 55 percent to zero this thing is never going to do that. So if the Kyle derps, but the Liam doesn't derp, you're still winning. If the Kyle uh, derps, but the Gerald doesn't derp, you might not be killing the boss. So for that reason, it's, it's a bit to say for both. I would say if you have that Liam, use the Liam. If not, you can then maybe have a try on the Gerald to have it a go and see if that can work. I'm also curious about one thing. With that 50% attack power on water, could I be one-shotting with the Julia if I make my Julia pretty slow? I was thinking about that. But at that time, I was also thinking like, I think I have no way to do enough damage to the boss if I would do something like that. So I'm not entirely sure if that is something that is worth to go for. But I do want to give it a quick check. So why not? So I added in a bunch of attack on the Julie. That's the main stat that we're aiming for because of the additional damage artifacts. Speed tuning is all not correct, but we're just going to try this on the manual set and just hit something else and then see if the Julie is actually close enough to one-shotting the waves right now. Because of course with the Zerath you can one-shot waves. With the Julie it is quite difficult. So just going to focus those two aside. The main question is can we one-shot the waves in the middle? No, we're still pretty far off from. So yeah you need like a really crazy crazy set do you actually want to have julie to one shot if you happen to have additional damage by attack on one of the two sides with like a triple roll and the other one a quad roll you might be able to get there because i would say that the main thing is additional damage artifacts which are making it work or not work so for that reason i don't think it's that great might you ask, like, why would you want your Julie to one-shot? Well, if you have your Julie one-shotting, then the uh, whole run becomes pretty interesting to the point where you would say, I can simply uh, do that and I could go for a, uh, what's it called? I could go for a cleanup with, like, a Lauren and then from a Lauren to a Luna and then maybe even use, like, uh, something along the lines of a Seek and then just go in a Liam from there. So, like, would it be really good? Not entirely sure, but yeah, those are just options that you might have with that case where it would work. Would people ask like, oh, but my Kyle's getting cut. I get that question all the time. Like, oh, no, but my Kyle's getting cut. Yeah, your first unit is too slow. Like, I had that like explained so many times. It's definitely one of those people that just watch half of the video, watch just the stats of the Kyle, and then is like, I can build this. Watch the stats of like everything, please. So yeah, that's pretty much the whole video to it. Um, simply said, 
it's a nice replacement. Is it a better replacement if you already happen to have a Liam? No. So just keep using the Liam team if you have. If you don't have a Liam, of course, use the Gerald. I would say if this thing gets slightly buffed, which is definitely possible, if he gets buffed and any of these skills get made better, it might actually become very interesting for this. And maybe also different dungeons for like high end speed chasing like kind of stuff. But I would say Gerald is mainly still this early beginner game uh, kind of unit that's very good. Except for this, maybe if you don't have that limb, then use the Gerald. Guys, thanks a lot for watching. And hope to see you as always in the next one. Thanks for watching. If you would like to see more guides, join the Discord and check out the content tab, which has the dungeon guide archive and the video guide archive, which contains all of the guides that you need. Hope to see you there.